What type of mold technique best suits your process? In this video, I'm going to go over the three basic types of molds that you might be making and the three types of techniques to choose from. And on the end screen, I'll be linking to the previous tutorials where I made these molds. And I'll also have a special Easter egg on the end screen, so stay tuned for that. But on this video, definitely don't neglect the end screen. Now, when you set out to make a mold for a casting project, you're probably going to be picking from one of these three techniques to make your mold. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the pros and cons of these three basic techniques. And there's a lot of spin-offs of these, but these are kind of the core techniques for rubber mold making. The block mold, the brush on mold, and of course the matrix or cavity pour mold. Now with any kind of molding and casting process, it's really important to start with the end goal of whatever your casting material is and work backwards from that point. So if you know going into it, you're going to be doing uh, solid resin casting, obviously a block mold is gonna be well suited for that. If you're going to be doing rotational casting, especially by hand, then you wanna engineer a mold that is conducive to that. Something lightweight and easy to rotate and move around. If you're going to be casting foam, you wanna make sure you engineer a mold that can withstand the pressure of expanding foam in that mold. So always really important in your thought process to start with the end goal and then work backwards from that point. Now, I should also take a, a moment to point out that I have recently done a reset on my face for uh, summer. It's summer here in Texas, so it's time to uh, get rid of the beard for a little bit. Um, so I know I might confuse and frighten some of you with my different appearance, but uh, this is uh, summer bitty season, so here we are. So let's get started, and we're going to go through each mold type and the pros and cons of each particular technique. Now for the block mold here, I went ahead and kept the resin cast in this. This is a knife mold I made in a previous video using TC5130 platinum silicone. And this particular silicone comes in two speeds. This, is a, this was the slow version that has about a 30 minute working time and a four hour demold. And this one cures to around a 25 shore A. And there's a fast version of this that goes off in, uh, has about a seven to eight minute working time and a one hour demold. And that's the one I typically prefer for doing molds like this just because the turnaround time is so much faster. But a, a block mold like this, this is ideal for casting uh, props, prototypes, smaller pieces that you could build a dam around and just pour the silicone over it. So the benefits of this is this is a fairly fast setup to do a mold like this, you're basically just building a dam out of foam core board or wood or MDF or whatever around your original item and pouring the silicone around it. And then it can either be uh, divided up with clay walls and poured in sections, or like this mold, you could actually cut this into multiple sections. I've had customers over the years that have made three, four, and five piece molds that they've cut apart. There's no right or wrong way to do that provided you can get your part out of the mold. But this technique is ideal for those smaller kind of items. This is probably starting to push the limits on the size of something I would mold with this technique. But uh, great for prototyping, great for product development applications. The main benefits to this are it doesn't require a huge amount of skill. It mainly requires a, a bigger in material investment. So it's a, a fairly simple technique to do and it's fast. So. Typically in the time we've been talking about this, I could have poured a block mold. So re really fast technique, but it does use a fair amount of silicone, especially if you're pouring really large block molds, it's gonna use a lot of material. So something to think about, typically, uh, I wouldn't do a block mold on something too much bigger than this. I've had customers that have made block molds, you know, with a couple of cubic feet of silicone. Uh, but typically for that, I would use something like either a brush on mold or a cavity pour matrix mold. But again, the main benefit to this is speed and a low amount of labor. Now, next up is the brush on mold. And this one is definitely more complicated to make as far as the shim technique. If you, you're curious about how I made that uh, shim wall, definitely click on the end screen and I'll link the video where I did the uh, the shim technique on this. And this kind of brush on mold technique 
brush on molds like this are typically used for larger items and items that are not conducive to a block mold, either because of their size or they might be too delicate to lay down in a box. So sometimes you have to go on site to make a brush on mold, something that might be attached to the side of a building. All of those things warrant brush on mold techniques where you may not be able to move the object, so you have to go to the object to make the mold. Now, the, the main benefit to making a brush on mold is it conserves a lot of silicone because obviously this little Chuck E. Cheese head, if we were to pour this guy in a block, that would take uh, probably 40, 50 pounds of silicone to pour that as a block mold. Whereas this took, uh, I think about six or seven pounds of silicone to make this mold. So much more conservative use of our silicone. This allows us to do larger pieces. Typically, I use this kind of technique on something like a human head. If I'm molding a head bust or a large sculpture, when I worked in the art bronze business, we would use this technique to mold entire life-size pieces. So brush-on molds are typically a technique you would use for larger scale pieces. And again, the trade-off here is it does require a lot more labor, but you're using a lot less material. Now, this also has the added step of, since this is a flexible brush-on rubber mold, we have to make a support shell for that. So then we make the mother mold or the support shell, the rigid support shell, over the outside of the mold. So again, added labor, added steps, um, but still fairly conservative on the actual use of the material. Because, of course, if we're molding a life-size sculpture or statue, making a block mold is wildly impractical. But real important to know when to use a brush on mold. Typically, larger figurines, larger sculptures, head busts, things like that lend themselves to the brush on mold process. Things that wouldn't work so well with that would be something like an electronic enclosure or a small prototype or something like that. You would use way too much labor to make a mold that in the end, one of the downsides also to this is we can't pressure cast with this because these layers are brushed on by hand, we can't subject this mold to pressure or it's gonna open up all those little bubbles in those brushed on layers. So again, this is ideal for uh, large pieces, helmets, things like that. We're gonna be rotational casting and we wanna keep that weight down. So overall, the pros for this is we use less material. It's a much more versatile process, but the downside is it does require a lot more labor and there's going to be limitations to what we can do with that mold later on. And then of course also, and this is a segue into the next type of mold, when we wear this mold out, we will have to redo all of these steps, so which is a lot of labor. So something to consider, if we're making Chuck E. Cheese heads and we know we're gonna make a thousand Chuck E. Cheese heads, then we're gonna be wearing out this mold and that's where a cavity pour is going to make more, much more sense for that than a traditional brushed on mold. Now last but certainly not least is the cavity pour or what a lot of people refer to as a matrix mold. Now a matrix mold or a cavity pour is really the marriage of the best attributes of a poured block mold along with the best properties of a brushed on mold. And what I mean by that is this particular method, we're actually going to make the mold in reverse. We're going to first build the shell and then pour the silicone inside the shell, which is where we get the terminology of a cavity pour. So the way this works is we have our original sculpture, in this case, our Venus statue. And what we're going to do is actually sculpt the mold with clay over our part. Typically, I protect the original with saran wrap and then build up my clay, roll it out in slabs and or melt it and brush it onto my piece to shape what is going to be the mold. And once I have the shape roughed out, then I build a pour spout on that and make my support shell around that clay that's over the master. Now, once that shell is done, I take that shell apart and strip off all the clay and put the, the master back in place. And now we're able to pour the silicone over that master into that cavity that's left behind after we remove the clay. And this is definitely one of those processes. Go look up the tutorial for this if you're unfamiliar with the matrix mold or cavity mold process, because seeing that done will make a lot more sense. Now, once we poured our silicone over our part into that support shell that we've made, we now have our finished mold. We can take everything apart, strip the silicone off of the original master, and now we have a mold ready for casting. 
Now there's a lot of advantages to a matrix mold or a cavity pour over a, a brush on mold or a block mold. And again, this particular method, this does require a lot more labor, more labor than uh, a block mold, definitely. Right up there about even with a brush on mold. But the main benefit to this is this allows the mold to be remade over and over. So now when we wear out this silicone mold inside, we throw away that silicone, put our support shell around our original master, pour more silicone, and we have another mold ready for production. So this type of technique is ideal for production casting. Anytime you're making a mold where you know you're gonna wear that mold out in production, this is a method that works excellent for that. Now it also works really well for figurines where you're going to be pressure casting because with this kind of mold, unlike a brush on mold, we can't pressure cast a brush on mold. Whereas a cavity pour or matrix mold, we could vacuum degas this before we pour it. And now this whole arrangement can be subjected to pressure and we can get a really nice figurine out of our mold provided this whole thing can fit into the pressure pot. So again, this method is ideal for larger pieces and especially pieces where you know you're going to be wearing out the mold so it makes sense to have this arrangement where you just put the shell back around your original pattern and pour more silicone. Now the pros and cons of this, um, obviously the downside to this is it is going to take more skill and more labor, but the upside is it's a very conservative use of silicone. And then we have that added benefit of we can subject what would normally be like a brush on mold, but now we have a vacuum degassed version of a brush on mold that can be subjected to pressure. And then we also have the added bonus of because we could shape this mold and we're not just pouring this in a simple block shape, we can keep the silicone fairly close to the original model and that allows that to be much more flexible. And then we get a lot more out of our silicone where we need a mold to be stretchy. In this case, like a one piece mold that's gonna pull inside out. So things like that, that allow us to utilize the silicone to its full potential. So those are the three most common rubber mold making techniques. Now on the end screen, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna put a special Easter egg for those of you who paid attention to this point in the video. So of course we'll have the knife mold link there, we'll have the uh, Chucky brush on uh, shim technique mold, and then of course this cavity matrix mold, but also a special more professional block mold made by BJB, by John over at BJB. So definitely check that out. Those of you doing product development or prototyping work that are making much more intricate block molds, definitely check out that tutorial because it's uh, very concise, but it goes into much more advanced techniques than I've done on this channel as far as molding things like electronic enclosures and original uh, prototype parts or 3D prints. So definitely check that out. Lots of valuable information in there. And again, I'll link that on the end screen. Now, in closing, it's important to remember that there's not a bad technique. All these techniques have their place in the molding and casting universe. It's just important to understand where they're best used because obviously making a brush on mold of a little two inch widget would not be a good use of your time. Whereas at the same time, something like uh, trying to pour a, uh, a block mold over something like a human head would be a profound waste of silicone. So real important to understand the pros and cons of the different techniques and watch all those tutorials and get a good understanding of how those work and how they relate to your process because all of us approach this slightly different depending on what industry we come from and what our end goal is going to be and what casting material we're going to be using. So again, always a good idea to work backwards from your casting material to make sure that your uh, mold material and your mold technique are compatible with your casting goals. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe and definitely check out the end screen. The block mold video I have here uh, does not even hold a candle to the BJB block mold. Lots of pro tips in there by John. So definitely check that out. You'll thank me for that later. So again, check the end screen for the tutorials. And those of you curious about the shim method, I didn't want to get into all the details in this video. So definitely check that out if you're not familiar with that method. Really good way to do a parting line on brush on molds like this. So as always, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.